Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we will be talking about four things that you might not know about Japan. Japan has four seasons. It has spring, it has summer, it has autumn, it has... Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> no, but seriously. So number one, Japan doesn't allow gay marriage. In Japan, gay marriage isn't legally accepted. It is not possible for a same-sex couple to marry legally in Japan. Right now, there are several movements and organizations that are really trying to change the law. For example, Marriage for All, where they do online streamings and you can watch it online. And that is actually one of the parameters that are being used to show that the public is interested in finally allowing marriage equality in Japan. And in 2019, Taiga Ishikawa was elected at the House of Councillors, and he's the first openly gay man who has been elected in the national diet. Also recently, this year, in March 17th, the court in Sapporo ruled that the law banning gay marriage is unconstitutional as it doesn't allow for freedom and equality among its people. It is true that since 2015, Japan has adopted a partnership program in which people from the same sex are allowed to be partnered together. Partnership programs do not have the same legal status as marriage and because it is not a legally binding document hospitals for example could refuse to share information with the partner if they are ill they could choose to not allow participation in the decision making of the care for their loved ones so pretty bleak huh number two japan demands proof of rape to the victim. In Japan, a victim of sexual assault needs to prove that they resisted assault by either causing bruises or scratches onto their rapist, which puts the victim in danger because it might cause retaliation. You do not know how you will react to trauma. Something that is nightmare inducing is that in order to report the attack, you will be forced to reenact the rape. You will be forced to reenact it with a mannequin surrounded by policemen, which can be just as traumatizing as the attack itself. In 2017, Shiori Ito broke the silence with her own attack, and in 2019, she won the case against her rapist which created precedent in Japan and triggered a conversation about sexual assault in Japan. Number three, healthcare isn't free. I hear this a lot from my American friends who are used to unbelievable invoices by their healthcare providers, but for myself as someone who grew up in Europe, for me having to pay to go to a hospital is kind of outrageous. For procedures that are covered by the national healthcare, the prices are not too unaffordable. However, there are many procedures that should be afforded, at least at a lower price, that are not covered by the insurance. Therefore, they are very, very expensive. For example, STI checks. So in theory, if it is covered by your health insurance, you should only pay about 30% of the cost. However, the cost can get gradually more and more expensive depending on the course of treatment and the tests that you need. Bonus point. Did you know that pregnancy is not covered by health insurance in Japan. The excuse is that pregnancy is not an illness or injury, despite the fact it might kill you. So instead, the government needs to give subsidies to pregnant people so that they can afford the care 
for their pregnancy. Oh, also epidurals are not covered and they can cost up to 100,000 yen and that is only if you have an anesthesiologist in the hospital when you are there which means you might as well give birth in a weekday during working hours which leaves a lot of people deciding if they should give birth with a c-section or by induced labor and the reason why epidurals aren't popular is because of the long-held belief that pain strengthens the bond between the baby and the person giving birth. I know. And finally, number four, is that couples that are married, heterosexual couples, they are not allowed to retain their own surname. So if a man and a woman decide to get married, they will have to have the same surname either the husband's or the wife's and only in 4.1 percent of cases do men take the surname of the women leaving the brunt of the paperwork onto their wives this can include going to the bank changing their banking information changing their passports changing their driver's license changing their phone contracts changing the housing information, doing the paperwork in their place of employment, etc, etc, etc. There have been numerous attempts to change the law so that couples can maintain their own surname, the surname that they have studied with, that they might have a career with, that they might have a patent with or a PhD in. One of the excuses that right-wing politicians like to use is that they believe that if a couple has a different surname for both spouses that that might lead to a weakening in the bonds of marriage never mind the fact that japan is really one of the few countries that doesn't allow separate surnames for spouses as a matter of fact i know for sure that japan is the only country in the g7 that doesn't allow it so that was it those were my four tidbits of information you might not have known about Japan. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, please subscribe. I am a tiny channel, so anything helps. Thank you very much and I hope to see you soon. Bye!